What's up guys, Mickle here, and in this video, we're going to be going over two pretty big developments that just happened in the Ripple SEC case that you guys are definitely going to want to see. First of all, Judge Torres just made a decision regarding the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass emails. In this video, we're going to go over exactly what Judge Torres just ruled on and how I think it's going to affect her end decision going forward. I also want to talk about another motion that the SEC just put in front of the court that directly relates to them hiding even more information in this case. I'm going to show you guys exactly what the SEC is trying to hide this time and why I think they're trying to hide it. Guys, this is pretty bad and I think it's really going to show you how bad of a spot the SEC is currently in in this case. Last of all, with all the craziness going on in the cryptocurrency market and traditional markets alike, it is so important that you invest into quality. At the end of this video, I want to show you guys one of the main things I look for when I look at Ripple and XRP that let me know this is a top tier project that really is going to change the entire financial system. I'm going to show you guys a very easy way to identify that something very big is going on at Ripple. It's so important to do this because you could have invested in a lot of companies during the initial dot com boom, but unless you got the real winners, you weren't going to make that much money. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I see with Ripple and XRP that lets me know that this project will be a winner and be one of the projects that really transforms our future financial system. If you guys are new to this channel or come here all the time, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It goes so a long way in helping this channel grow and it really does mean so much to me if you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some xrp make sure to check out the link in the description below with that said though let's jump right into it and i hope you guys enjoy the content <laughs> Like I always say in the beginning of my videos, if you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy XRP, make sure to check out the uphold link in the description below. It's one of my favorite exchanges and one of the exchanges I use most often. Also, if you guys want to get six free stocks, make sure to check out the link for Moomoo. If you sign up with Moomoo and deposit just $1, you will win six free stocks. Each one could be worth up to $1,000. So make sure to check that out if you want some free stocks. So guys, I want to start this video off. And before we talk about the new developments in the Ripple SEC case, I quickly wanted to go over a very interesting development in the Coinbase case. We know that the SEC just sued a former Coinbase employee, essentially alleging that different cryptocurrencies traded on Coinbase are securities. I want I wanted to show you guys this interesting note from the Coinbase chief compliance officer. He said Coinbase has a rigorous process to analyze and review each digital asset before making it available on our exchange, a process that the SEC itself has reviewed. Very interesting. And attorney Bill actually chimed in here. Attorney Bill said this quote is from Coinbase's chief legal officer. This would be the same rigorous process the SEC reviewed that Coinbase used to find XRP wasn't a security when it was listed. Does this mean Coinbase will now cave in and delist seven more cryptos as it did for XRP? So this is a very interesting question and something we have not seen Coinbase lean into yet. We know that when the SEC first brought their case against Ripple, Coinbase almost immediately delisted XRP. This caused a chain reaction of different exchanges delisting XRP until Uphold was essentially the only cryptocurrency exchange still listing XRP in the US. Well, attorney Bill asked a very interesting question here, and that is whether or not Coinbase will now delist these other assets. This is something I do not want to see happen because it's not good for crypto in general, but it would be very interesting if Coinbase chose not to do it. It seems like the Coinbase chief legal officer coming out and saying that the SEC has reviewed their process is kind of like him saying, look, the SEC is wrong here. They already reviewed our process. They said this process was good, and we use this process to determine these crypto cryptocurrencies are not securities. So it sounds like he's coming back and fighting more than Coinbase did when the SEC originally came after Ripple. Now, this is something we're definitely going to have to pay attention to, but Ashley Prosper tweeted out, if Coinbase does not remove the alleged securities or in the alternative, relist XRP, every XRP holder should refuse to use them for any transactions. And I completely agree with this. I do not want to see Coinbase delist these other alleged securities on their platform, because like I said, that's not good for anyone in crypto, but it would be absolutely absurd if the if Coinbase did not delist these assets and it went on to continue not listing XRP. That would show that Coinbase has a very severe bias against XRP. That is definitely not something I want to see. It would be completely absurd if Coinbase kept these so-called securities on their platform and didn't 
relist XRP. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any way that Coinbase will actually relist XRP until this lawsuit is over. Coinbase seems very okay with trying to cozy up with the SEC as much as possible rather than fighting back. This is one of the most annoying things for me out of any of this. The crypto industry has so much power and when players like Coinbase choose to bend the knee to the SEC rather than working with everyone else, it just gives the SEC more power and empowers the SEC to keep going after different people. I think it's pretty ironic that Coinbase, a company that really tried as hard as they could to get on the SEC's good side and comply with the SEC, is still getting sued by the SEC. I think it really shows getting close with the SEC is not going to work if you have any place in crypto and you're really just better off joining the fight against the SEC and looking to move this industry out of their jurisdiction. I want to move on now though and show you guys some different developments going on right now in the Ripple SEC case because a few of these are very interesting and it's starting to become obvious that the SEC is getting very sloppy and very desperate. Just the other day, James K. Filan tweeted out, the SEC has filed a motion to seal in connection with the motions to exclude expert testimony that were filed on July 12th by the defendants and the SEC. So what the SEC is trying to do here, and this is pretty bad, the SEC is trying to cover up the past work history of their different experts, essentially and most likely because they know that the XRP community is going to dig into these different individuals' work histories and realize that none of their experts are really cryptocurrency experts at all. The SEC is going to get severely outclassed when it comes to experts in this case, and it looks like the SEC's response to this is just to try to cover up the past work history of their experts. Turning Fred actually chimed in on this motion and he said based on the low quality and late filing of this motion in my opinion the SEC is falling further and further behind there is too much on its plate and it clearly does not have the resources to do its day job remember actually protecting the public and rather to conquer crypto so what attorney Fred is saying here is the SEC is falling behind and it's causing their filings to get very sloppy apparently he read through this and was not impressed at all and it's important to point out that this motion has already been kind of turned down by the court so the SEC is just kind of desperately throwing this out there to try to cover up their experts work history attorney Fred is essentially pointing out here also which is pretty interesting is the SEC is trying so hard to fight this case and they're actually falling behind on it well then how could the SEC possibly also be doing its real job which is to protect the retail public that's kind of a trick question. We know the SEC is doing essentially absolutely nothing to protect the retail public, but this just goes to show that the SEC is really running short on resources. This is a very good sign because as we watch the SEC take up more and more cases, the SEC is going to be forced to dump the cases that are really not going well for them. It's very clear that they are getting outclassed by Ripple in this case, and I am already shocked that the SEC has been willing to drag this out for so long. In my opinion, the SEC really needs to start thinking hard about settling this case. I've said this multiple times, I cannot see the SEC going to summary judgment on this thing. The SEC has to know, unless they're delusional, that they are going to lose big at summary judgment. Unless Ripple is turning down all settlements right now, I can't see why the SEC wouldn't offer Ripple up a settlement right now. The SEC has already admitted multiple times that there are going to be cryptocurrencies out there that are not securities there are many that will be commodities so why not just bite the bullet admit xrp is not a security and move on from this case the alternative is that the sec could lose big and could lose their entire jurisdiction over the entire crypto industry this is something the SEC cannot afford to do, and that's why it's so shocking to me that the SEC is not elected to simply settle this case, take the loss, admit XRP is not a security, and live to fight another day in the crypto industry, hopefully win on another case. I'm shocked the SEC hasn't done this yet, but guys, there's still a lot of time for this case to settle. Let's see what happens. Now, very recently, there actually was a ruling by Judge Torres in this case relating to the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass emails. James K. finally tweeted out, in connection with the SEC, SEC's objection to Judge Netburn's ruling on the Hinman speech documents, the SEC's motion to file a 30-page opening brief was denied, limited to 20 pages, but its request to file a 10-page reply brief was granted. So essentially what the SEC was doing here was they were trying to position themselves to essentially object to Judge Netburn's decision where she essentially told the SEC they need to hand over the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass documents to Ripple. The SEC does not want to do this and they are essentially preparing to object all of Judge Netburn's decisions to Judge Torres. Essentially they got half of what they were looking for. They're not going to get added length to their objection but they will get a reply brief. This seems like a kind of win kind of loss. I don't think it really means that much the bigger story here is that the sec actually is going to object 
all of Judge Netburn's decisions to Judge Torres in relation to the Bill Hidman Ethereum free pass emails. Now, it's very important to point out here that most of the lawyers following this case do not think there is any way that the SEC will win this objection. Most of the lawyers think that the SEC will get turned down on this by Judge Torres, and I think this is a pretty fair assessment. I do not think there is any way that Judge Torres is going to rule over Judge Netburn. They've been working together on this entire case. There is no way they haven't already communicated about this multiple times. So I think the chance that Judge Torres would actually overrule Judge Nepburn is extremely low and the SEC will once again be ordered to hand over the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass emails. Now, I actually think it's a really bad strategy for the SEC to be objecting on this decision because the SEC has already pissed off these judges multiple times and I can't see how it could possibly be a good idea to once again be objecting to an already set in stone court ruling. It's obviously gonna piss off the court right before summary judgment. I think this is a huge mistake by the SEC, and I think the court is likely going to make them pay for this when summary judgment comes around. Unfortunately, the SEC seems to have the biggest ego of all time. They don't seem to care, but I don't think that's going to pay off very well for them. Last of all, I wanted to show you this because I really do think this is one of the most important things you need to pay attention to when you're assessing the strength of a project. One of the things that is stand out for Ripple and XRP is the people that surround the ecosystem. Right now on the Ripple board, we see different members of the Treasury, the Federal Reserve, BlackRock, the White House, and even members that were part of both the Treasury and the Federal Reserve. Guys, this is a top tier team that are all standing directly behind the digital asset XRP. If this doesn't tell you that XRP is going to have a certain future in our financial system, I don't know what will. These people are not working for Ripple, they are not involved with XRP because it's some small niche Web3 company. Guys, these people are coming from the most powerful positions in the entire world and going to work directly for Ripple. These people know that XRP is going to have a certain future in our financial system, and the fact that we can follow these people, understand that they know things we never will, guys, that's why I look at the project XRP and it puts it miles ahead of every other project out there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. I hope everyone has a great weekend, and for now, Mickle out. Thank you.